I often get asked in the comments why I make so much content for mature women when I'm not mature. I don't know how to do this. Those experiences with those women, it changed me because I'm like, has no one taken time for you? I know so many of you like don't see yourself anymore, you know, and you look in the mirror and you're like, I can't do that because I'm old. And it's like, you can do whatever the hell you want. Hey guys. Oh my gosh, it's been a hot minute since we've done this. I'm taking my jacket off, I'm this so hot. I cleaned up for you. I cleaned up for you. Come sit and have a coffee with me. We have so much to catch up on. Oh my God, where do I even begin? In the winter, I posted a video called I Am Not Okay. And it was a video about the loss of my grandparents. And truthfully, it was a video that was so unbelievably hard for me to make. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to sit here and do this. It's so funny because this is my whole life. YouTube is my whole life. And I just don't know how to do this. I don't know how to just be myself and vulnerable and I'm not sure if I should be or what I'm doing or who I am on this platform. I have been a makeup and hair artist for 17 years and I love creating tutorial content for you. And then there's a part of me that wants to get to know you better and I want you to get to know me better and it to be more real and less perfect because something that I've been realizing and something that I really realized this year is that life isn't, it's not perfect at all. Life is like messy and sloppy and tragic and amazing and beautiful and horrible. And somehow it's all simultaneously happening at the exact same time. And life is just such a, a complex web of experiences and how we interpret those experiences and how we take them. I feel sometimes like my channel is because of my obsessive need to be perfect. It's very structured and perfect and there's no bad takes and there's no ad libbing. Everything's super thought out and researched. And I think that that's why you guys like the channel because it moves quickly. But I find myself so attracted to these channels where people are just themselves and real and it's real life and it's not in any way perfect because perfection isn't real. Back to what I was saying, I made this video called I am not okay. I didn't want to make this video at all. I was having like a mental breakdown in that time in my life. And one of the girls who works here on the channel with me, she told me, she's like, why don't you make a video about this? And I was like, what? No, like there's nothing I, I can't. Like this isn't about beauty. Like people aren't going to care. And she's like, just make a video because she had lost someone in her life that was important to her. And when I spoke to her, she like, she connected and she understood. And it was not only validating to her, but it was validating to me to feel heard and seen and not alone. And that's the biggest thing. And I think that's what makes YouTube so powerful. YouTube makes you feel not alone. So I put that video out there and I had like mad anxiety. I talked about not even having, not even releasing the video forever. It was sitting on my computer. And then finally I'm like, it went live and it was like, boom, you know, this video started fast with views and comments and it continued to propel and propel and propel, got hundreds of thousands, you know, over a hundred thousand views and thousands of comments. It was just the craziest thing because I just didn't expect that. And I felt like in my grief in that moment, having lost two people that were so important to me. I felt like the whole entire world was like giving me a hug. I thought when I released that video that it was gonna be really bad for my mental health because the internet can be toxic, you know? And I just didn't know what feedback I was gonna get. I was so scared to read the comments. I didn't read the comments for like quite a few days actually and they were pouring in, like my phone was blowing up and I was like, I can't read these comments. And the comments were like stories of grief and loss and coming out the other side. And I got so much amazing advice and encouragement and support. I just really felt like I'm going to be okay. And I knew I was going to be okay, but having had thousands of people go through it with me and tell me like, I felt that and I, this is where I'm at now and this is how it's going to feel and this is how it's going to evolve. It was 
so tremendously impactful to me. Like I can't even tell you how much it means to me, you know? Like thank you, thank you for being there for me and for being a part of this community. You know, YouTube is my heart and soul and I just can't even believe that I get to do this as a job and I get to support my like beautiful kids. And I, I always just kind of felt like it was a production and it was a show and it was, and it was fully produced and scripted and thought out and researched and everything was cut quickly and, and everything was done with so much intentionality and thought. And when I put that video out there, I really thought, okay, I'm gonna launch this, it's going to be a disaster and then I'm going to unlist it or I'm going to make it private. And it wasn't that at all. And it just kind of made me see that like YouTube is a platform for human connection and being able to relate to someone and feel seen by someone. And it was eye-opening for me and I didn't know what to do with that information. It was very healing for me, but at that time I just couldn't, I couldn't film anything after that because I just, that was like this, that's like re really raw, you know, just friends having coffee. Please make a coffee. Make a coffee. I would have made you a coffee if I could because we're hanging out in my house, you know? We're hanging out. So make a coffee and hang out with me so we can talk a little bit about life. But yeah, I just, I don't know what to do with it now. And I want you guys to tell me, like, what do you want to see from me? I know that you like my tutorials and I love making them and I'm going to continue making them. But do you want to do a check-in once a month? Do you want me to start going live and answering beauty questions once a month or twice a month? What do you guys want? Because the platform has kind of snowballed into this thing that I wasn't expecting it to snowball into. And I'm so blessed and, and thankful, but I also like want you to know that like I see you, I'm listening, I'm reading your comments. I'm not just a creator that is in it for like fame or like any of that, but I just don't know how to evolve the channel now that it's so big and I don't know how personal you want it to be or how tutorial based you want it to be, but please let me know in the comments because I would love to, to move it in the direction that's best for you. Moving on from that, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that I've felt in the last year since having lost my grandparents. I started going to therapy. <laughs> I had some emails about people offering therapy services to me, which was really so sweet. But I did start going to therapy and that has helped tremendously. And it, it's funny because I've started noticing therapy really makes you very self-aware. And I've started noticing a lot of like patterns of thoughts that I have. For one, I'm highly anxious. I'm a very anxious person. And I think a lot of that anxiety stems from being such a perfectionist. I feel sometimes like I don't, like the world makes no sense to me and I don't know how to make it make sense because I'm such a rational, logical person that I just think, you know, you're alive, you're born and you live and you have your life. And like billions of people are born and they live and they have their life and then they die. And then that's the end. And I'm not a religious person, so I don't see it further than that. Like that is just what life is to me. And in so many ways, that's very actually therapeutic to me because I know that if there's tragedy or sadness or mistakes in life, it really just ends and then it doesn't matter anymore. And sometimes I look at something like, I find myself watching like a billion ants, you know, like. I don't know, a thousand ants on the sidewalk. And like my son will like run and like step on one. And it's like, ah, we killed the ant. But you never think about it, really. Because there's like a million ants and billions of ants. And sometimes I feel like we are just an ant and like nothing matters. I'm having in my late 30s this like existential crisis moment where I just feel like your life matters to you and it matters to the people that are really close to you, like my kids and my husband, and my parents. But then it doesn't really matter because then you just die and then that's the end. And then the crazy thing about it is having seen my grandparents be young and vivacious and we would do family vacations together and have so much fun together and laugh. And then they got elderly and they got tired and sick and my grandma, broke her femur and then she was immobile. It's just so tragic, isn't it? That you live your life and then in your senior years and they're gonna come for everyone. It's not like time doesn't stop. 
you know, it's going to come. And then you start experiencing loss because like I'm in my late thirties, I lost my grandparents and it's like a miracle that I haven't lost anyone before that. But that drilled some type of like hole in my brain that brings me, like I think about this and it makes me so sad. Like I put my son to bed and I sing to him every night and he's five. And when I'm singing to him, sometimes I'll hear like my grandma singing to me because that's what she did when I was little, you know? And it was like this time that was here and then it's suddenly gone. And I can hear her so clearly, you know? And I'll never ever hear her again. I guess like where I'm, f where I feel a lot of anxiety is that eventually like, it's not gonna be my grandparents, it's gonna be my parents. I feel like I'm on this roller coaster, like teetering towards despair. <laughs> Oh my God, that's like so messed up, right? Like how do I even, but I do think that, like I just feel like I'm just an ant ready to get squished on, but the death part doesn't scare me, which is crazy. But the thought of all the sadness that I'll have to eventually live through, it's like too much for my heart, you know? And right now my kids are at these amazing ages. They're like, they're like perfection, you know? My youngest is five and my oldest is eight and they're just so beautiful and perfect and sweet and loving You're and like, cutie. You're a cutie. You're a cutie. And like eventually it's going to change. Not that they're not gonna be sweet and loving and I'm sure I'm gonna have an amazing relationship with them or I hope, but it's gonna be different. They're not gonna come into my bed every night. They're not going to want me to scratch their back and sing to them every night. And I feel like I'm entering into this new stage. I'm entering my 40s and it's super scary because you lose people you love that are older, but you kind of also lose the people that are younger. And you grow them into these little birdies with these little wings and then you're like, fly. But they're flying into greatness, but they're also flying away from you. I feel like this grief for that sometimes. And it's crazy because it hasn't happened yet. So my therapist said it's called anticipatory grief. <laughs> if you feel this, like, <laughs> You're not crazy, or maybe you are. Maybe I'm crazy too. <laughs> but there's something called anticipatory grief, and it's anticipating the sad things that happen before they happen and grieving them before they happen. And I have this tendency to grieve things before they happen because I feel like if I grieve it now, then it won't be so bad when it happens. You know, I keep thinking, like every time I put Ollie to bed, especially my little one, and he, I always lay with him until he's asleep. And then when he's asleep, I will, I just like bury my face in his little head and I like smell his hair and I smell his skin. And I just like, I want to just like freeze that time because it's gone after, you know? And it's just like my grandparents, my grandpa would call me every day and, there were days when I was really busy with clients and it would annoy me, you know, and I would like ignore, hit ignore, hit ignore, and he'd call me on repeat. And I'd eventually put my phone on silent and be like, ugh. And, and then I'd call him later and then it's gone. And then it's gone forever, forever, you know? And sometimes I like, I can hear them. I can hear their voice, but it's just like a distant memory. And how tragic is that? And I think after I had that loss, I almost have like, um, I guess it's like a trauma response, I guess, but mild, like it's okay. But I feel that way with like my kids where I'm like, I'm going to lose you, you know? And I just need to like take this moment and like freeze it forever because when it's gone, like bam, it's gone. I remember holding my little guy in his carrier. He loved to be like close to my body. He was like a very clingy baby. And it like, it felt like forever that I couldn't put that kid down. And then like, it was gone. That was it. It was here. And then one day, there was one day where I put him in that carrier for the very last time. And I never put him in that carrier again. And I almost wish I knew what day that was so i could just take a minute i guess i wasn't living as mindfully before my grandparents passed because it felt like moments never changed you know when you're young you're going through these moments and it feels like they're never ever going to change it just feels like it's always going to be the same way 
and then it's not and you can't you can't go back you can only just relive it and so i guess i've been going through that um lately just feeling this anticipatory grief over so many things. My therapist says, you know, you have to enjoy the things that you're going through now and not look forward and grieve what's gone when it's not gone because then you're grieving twice, right? I'm grieving the moment now that hasn't happened. And then I'll grieve the moment when it happens because it's going to happen. And like, what's the use in grieving twice? And I guess that's where I'm at with it all because life comes and goes and it's this timeline and then it's over. And I guess wherever in the timeline you are, like no matter what, life is going to change. You can't stop change, you can't. And you have to like accept it and not try to hold on to things because they're not going to stop changing because you're resisting the change from happening. But you didn't expect this therapy session from me today. You're welcome. Another thing I wanted to address um, is a question that I often get asked in the comments. You ready for this one? I often get asked in the comments why I make so much content for mature women when I'm not mature. I mean, I am mature, but I'm not 55 or 60, right? And it's a completely legitimate question. And I've even had other creators mention it on their channel being like, she makes amazing content for mature women, which is odd because she's young. And I know it's odd. I am fully aware that it's not really typical. This is the reason why Okay, I'm gonna explain. So I have a bridal business that I'm winding down now, but it's been a huge part of my life forever. I started it when I was like 19 years old. And my team and I, I have a team that worked for me and we go on location to do bridal services, hair and makeup, bridal beauty services. And I noticed throughout the years that like the mothers of the bride and mothers of the grooms were the ones that were like tossed aside. Like they were scheduled last or whoever got them didn't really want to do their makeup or hair. And as I got older, and especially after I became a mother, I realized like the tragedy in that. Like these women are amazing. Some of them have multiple children. Some of them have careers. Some of them don't, but they are incredible mothers. They are multifaceted fully diverse women with so many different layers of complexity and life lived. And like people didn't really want to do their makeup because their eyelids are sagging a bit or they have wrinkles or their skin tone is a little discolored. And it's like this lack of, of understanding in the industry on how to work with different faces. And how is that different than working with different races? You know, as an experienced makeup artist, you should know how to work with white faces, black faces, Asian faces, redheads, that you have to know that. You know, and there's absolutely no excuse for not having a foundation shade in your kit. If someone sits in your chair and you can't work on them, shame on you. For real, shame on you. Because that is just, it shows a real lack of professionalism in your trade. And I couldn't believe how that was very much the case for mature faces. And so I always booked those women with me. So the mothers of the brides, the grandmas of the brides, the, you know, the aunts and the great aunts. I always booked them with me. I would do the bride and I would do these women and I would give my team everyone else. And my, my team is, ama is amazing. They really are amazing. And they could work with anyone. But I specifically wanted these women to feel special because as I got to know them and talk to them, I realized like the depth and the complexity of what they were going through. These women raised these little babies, you know, the stage that I'm at now. They're these perf perfect little creatures that you literally make and you love them so deeply and wholly. And then they grow up and they leave your little tiny nest and they fly and fly and they start a new life with someone else. It's beautiful, but simultaneously tragic for the mother. You know, it's like the best worst thing. I felt that way a little bit when I had a newborn. It's the most amazing, amazing, while simultaneously being the most horrible thing you've ever done to your life. And it's confusing those emotions. And I feel like being a mother of the bride or a mother of the groom is very much that. It's so great. You feel so much pride and love and you're gaining a new family member, but it also is entirely and completely heartbreaking. And there's no acknowledgement of it. It's like, well, I don't wanna work on her because I don't know how to work on 
hooded eyes. And it's like, are you kidding me? What? Then learn, then learn. And so <laughs> I just felt like when I was working on these women, the conversations had so much more depth than when I was working with, you know, a 20 year old bridesmaid, as it should, like a 20 year old bridesmaid is a completely different stage of life. And especially when I became a mother, I started to understand them so differently. And so many times I would be talking deeply with a client and they would burst into tears and I'm like, I am not making this day easier for you because I can empathize with those feelings even though I haven't been there. Do I know the feeling? I don't. I haven't experienced it, but <laughs> I've, an I've experienced it with anticipatory grief, let me tell you. <laughs> but in that exact moment, living it for real, I haven't experienced that. But one day I will if I'm lucky. You know, one day if I'm lucky and I'm there, I will experience that. And they deserve just as much love and care and attention as even the bride does. And the thing with mature beauty is that I think in mother, motherhood kind of beats you down so much. It brings you up in so many ways, but it beats you down too. And I think once you get to a certain age, you stop thinking that you're important because your whole life has been caring for other people. And giving these women some time and expertise and making them feel truly beautiful. And beauty is so much more than how you look. It's how you feel, if you're seen, if you're listened to, if you're understood. It's a completely all-encompassing feeling of your self-worth, self-love, grace. It's so much more than makeup. And when I would turn the mirror, you know, when they were done and they were like, Wow. And that changed me. It did. Those experiences with those women, it changed me because I'm like, has no one taken time for you in the last 30 years? Has no one showed you how gorgeous you are or told you or saw you? Has no one seen you? You become kind of this invisible figure in your house when you're a mom. And it's like, no one sees you anymore. And when you're 60, 70, 80, it's like your, your beauty doesn't matter anymore. And um, beauty isn't physical. It's so much more than that, you know? And I just wanted to remind people and women that their beauty does matter, that they are so beautiful. And that's why I started those videos. And then I get all these really funny questions being like, what on earth? Why are you giving this advice when you're like 30? I'm 37 and it's like because why isn't anyone else and why can't you see that the true grace and beauty of a mature woman when you're not mature why can't you appreciate it my grandmother was one of the most beautiful women i've ever known and she's never worn makeup she doesn't like she didn't like it at all she just didn't it wasn't her thing and she was absolutely gorgeous like we would facetime and just her face her smile her energy her hilarious advice about <laughs> sex and all these she's a very modern woman and she was such a strong amazing woman and that's like isn't that like what beauty is you know and i think i hope that she had that self-love and i think she did but i know so many of you guys don't I know so many of you like don't see yourself anymore, you know, and you look in the mirror and you're like, I can't do that because I'm old. And it's like, you can do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> and you almost- I don't know that one. Oh, Alexa's listening to me. <laughs> what the hell? Um, anyways, this got real sappy real fast. I just, yeah, I see you, I do. And it's weird <laughs> that I make, 90% of my content is for the woman over 50, 55. But it's because like, I see you, you know? And, and I hope that you see yourself too because you're so damn beautiful, you know? And you should be so proud of the life that you have lived. Anyways, I'll end this here because this is, <laughs> this is where it should end. <laughs> this video's over.